हेलो एवरीवन नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द सुपर क्रिटिकल बॉयलर लेट्स स्टार्ट द टॉपिक इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द हाई प्रेशर बॉयलर इन दैट लेक्चर आई एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द लॉमोंड बॉयलर लॉयफलर बॉयलर देन वेलॉक्स बॉयलर ऑल दोस बॉयलर वर द सब क्रिटिकल बॉयलर नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द सुपर क्रिटिकल बॉयलर लेट्स स्टार्ट द टॉपिक सुपर क्रिटिकल बॉयलर और वन स्रू बॉयलर बोथ आर सेम द वन स्रू बॉयलर वर्क ऑन द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ क्रिटिकल पॉइंट ऑफ वॉटर यू नो वेरी वेल दिस इज दॉटर कर्व ऑन द टेम्परेचर एंड एंट्रोपी एक्सेस दिस वन इज दैचुरेटेड लिक्विड लाइन दिस वन इज दैचुरेटेड वेपर कर्व यू कैन से The point where saturated liquid curve and saturated vapor curve meets, that point is called the critical point. This is called the critical point. So the once-through boiler or super-critical boiler will work beyond the critical point pressure. Okay, we know very well in Rankine cycle what happens. These are the constant pressure line. These are the constant pressure line. As the pressure will increase. the saturation temperature will also increase but the latent heat will decrease you see here as the pressure is increasing the saturation temperature is increasing but the latent heat is decreasing and now at the critical point what will happen at critical point the latent heat will be zero latent heat becomes zero so the super critical boiler or one screw boiler will work on this principle only the super critical boiler will work at a pressure beyond the critical point pressure what are the values the value for critical pressure is 220.5 bar or 221 bar we can say and temperature is 373.946 degree celsius or 374 degree celsius these are the condition for critical point or these are the values of pressure and temperature at the critical point now how a super critical boiler works friends you know very well this is the sub critical boiler i'll explain the steam after the super heater or steam from the drum it is going into the super heater then super heated steam will go into the hp turbine then after the expansion of steam in hp turbine the steam will go into the reheater after reheater the steam will go into the lp turbine now from the lp turbine it will go into the condenser then from condenser through cep and bft it will go into the boiler and in boiler it will go into the evaporator then evaporator to drum from drum to economizer then again from economizer to drum and from drum steam will separate from the water and that steam will go into the super heater this is the working of a sub critical boiler now how the super critical boiler works let's see in super critical plant all these system will available all the system will be there but the difference is only super critical boiler let's see here the feed water which is coming from the boiler feed pump it will go into the hp heater and after hp heater it will go into the economizer then from economizer it will go into the evaporator after economizer or evaporator the water will flash into the steam that means it will convert into a steam directly there is no mixture of water and steam okay so at this point that is point 9 dash at this point we will provide one flash tank and at this flash tank the water will convert directly into steam now that steam will be sent into super heater in super heater the steam temperature will increase and after getting the desirable temperature which is required for the steam turbine we will get the temperature at the outlet of this super heater and then this steam will send into hp turbine now again the process is same for the steam as in the sub critical boiler the difference is only in super critical boiler now let's see this process on Rankine cycle or on TS diagram, how this process will work? This is point number eight. 
द वॉटर फ्रॉम द फीड पम्प इट विल गो इन टू दी एच पी हीटर सो देर विल इंक्रीज ए टेम्परेचर एट टू नाइन दैट इज हैपनिंग इन एच पी हीटर देन फ्रॉम पॉइंट नाइन टू नाइन डैश दिस प्रोसेस विल हैपनिंग इन इकोनोमाइजर और इवेपोरेटर सो फ्रॉम पॉइंट नाइन टू नाइन डैश द वॉटर विल टेक हीट फ्रॉम दी बॉयलर और फ्रॉम दी फ्लू गैस सो इन दिस केस टेम्परेचर विल इंक्रीज फ्रॉम नाइन टू नाइन डैश Now this nine dash temperature will meet at the critical point. Let's see. Now at this temperature, at nine dash temperature, water will convert into steam or will flash into steam directly. There is no formation of mixture of water and steam. So from point number nine dash, we will provide one flash tank, and from that flash tank, whatever steam is generated, that steam will sent into the super heater. now from 9 dash to 1 this is complete in the super heater now from 1 to 2 it is hp turbine 2 to 3 reheater 3 to 4 lp turbine then 4 to 5 is condenser 5 to 6 cp 6 to 7 lp heater 7 to 8 bfp now this cycle will complete by this way the super critical boiler will work you see here as the temperature is increased from this point 9 dash the water will flash into steam directly remember this point very carefully if this is a subcritical boiler then the process will happen like this from 8 to this line will go like this or it will go like this this process may happen like this so this is the process for subcritical boiler let's see in this case you can easily see 8 to 9 then 9 to 9 dash 9 dash to 1 this is the process which is happening in subcritical boiler so in this case there is no mixture of water and steam that's why there is no boiler drum no boiler drum in this case okay so this is the working of a super critical boiler or once through boiler let's see how the heat transfer surfaces are arranged in once through boiler we will study here one by one let's start from this point the feed water is coming into the economizer and from the economizer it is going into the evaporator in evaporator this feed water will take heat and this in evaporator this water will take heat and then it will send into the flash tank in flash tank this water will flash into steam directly and then steam will go into the super heater section from this super heater it will send into the this super heater section and from this super heater section it will send into the final super heater 5 and from final super heater it will be sent to the hp turbine after expansion of steam in the hp turbine the steam will be sent to the v heater see here this is a v heater this is dark black line is showing that the heater is there and through this reheater it will send into the final reheater and this one is the final reheater from final reheater it will go into the lp turbine this is the process how water and steam flow in a once through boiler friends remember this thing this is a sulzer make boiler there is a company sulzer that is sulzer make boiler in this case there is a triflux reheater is there we are using two number of reheater this is point number 6 is final reheater and one reheater is this one this is you see here this is the dark black line this is also a reheater why this is called triflux reheater because in this case this reheater is taking heat from two source one is from the flue gas second one from the steam that steam which is going into this super heater so in this case this reheater is taking heat from the flue gas and from the super heated steam also that's why it is called the triflux reheater okay so friends we have seen the working in the once through boiler in this case this one is the flash tank and in this case there is no steam drum now let's see there is one more boiler for the, that is called benson boiler that boiler also works beyond the critical point let's see the benson boiler is a high pressure drumless water tube steam boiler using four circulation in this boiler the feed water enters at one discharge end one end and discharge superheated steam at other end 
See here, it is and E and D and G. Please correct, it is E and D. Now the feed pump increase the pressure of water to supercritical point or beyond the supercritical pressure, and thus the water directly transform into steam without boiling. That means in this case there is no mixture of water and steam. You see here the water from the feed pump it will send into the economizer. Then from economizer it is going into the evaporator. This is the radiant evaporator. Then it will go into the convective evaporator. Surface. After this evaporator, it will send into the convective superheater. Then, in the convective superheater, we will take out the steam, and this steam will send into the steam turbine for further expansion. This is the steam and water cycle for the Benson boiler. In this case, the air will come like this, and the air will go at bottom or, or at the combustion chamber. We are preheating the air, and flue gas will go like this. From bottom to top, and exhaust will happen from the chimney. Chimney is at the top. It is a vertical type boiler. So this is the Benson boiler. I have already explained the working of Benson boiler. Please read all these lines. Now, what are the advantages of Benson boiler? In Benson boiler, there is no drum, so weight of the Benson boiler is very very less. That has been reduced twenty percent less than the other boiler. So there is no drum. So in this case, the heat transfer of Benson part is easy. One more feature is once through boiler and the feed water entering at one end and superheated steam is we are getting superheated steam at other end. Its starting time is less than the other boiler. It has efficiency more than ninety percent. Due to the super critical type of boiler, its controlling need to monitor every time for, for preventing any explosion. This is the disadvantage. Otherwise, it is advantage that the so it is a super critical boiler and controlling requires more attention. More attention is required for the system. But if there is no attention is given, there is a chances of explosion or explosion of this boiler. Boiler control for the variable load is difficult. What are the application? This boiler is used for the power generation, and it will generate the steam at 650 degree Celsius and at pressure 250 bar, and the quantity of steam generation is 130 TPH. Okay, so these are the advantage, disadvantage, and application of a Benson boiler. Let's see some advantages of once through boiler or super critical boiler. in super critical boiler there is no limit for steam generation there is no limit for higher steam generation or higher steam pressure full steam temperature can be maintained over a wide range of load that means changing of load is there then steam temperature can be maintained high heat transfer rate are considerably large compared to sub critical boiler this boiler have high thermal efficiency there is no problem of erosion and corrosion in this type of boiler the turbo generator connected to super critical boiler can generate peak load at varying pressure at varying pressure of steam starting and cooling down of this boiler is fast once through boiler is smaller in size and weight less i have already explained that there is no boiler drum that's why the weight is very very less easy control of steam temperature during startup and during shutdown but in between that the control is much difficult but we have to pay attention we have to be very attentive and monitoring should be very very attentive otherwise chances of explosion will be high in this super critical boiler great freedom in arrangement and location of heating surface we can place any heating surface at anywhere we have so much freedom easy to adopt variable pressure operation for better performance at part load operation it means the super critical boiler is easy to operate at part load operation elimination of heavy wall drum decrease the metallurgical sensitivity i have already explained all this thing so friends in this lecture we have studied about the super critical boiler or once through boiler in that we have studied about how super critical boiler works and what are the super critical boiler what are the example and how 
the water and steam flows in a supercritical boiler after that we have seen one example that is benson boiler after that we have seen advantage and disadvantage of benson boiler then we have seen some advantages of supercritical boiler in the next lecture we will study about the performance of boiler thanks for watching this video and have a good day bye bye